Hello, it is Saturday, August 12th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday puzzle today, which means it may well be the most difficult puzzle of the week, but it sounds like it probably won't be the most difficult Saturday of the last few months. I've uh, took another look at the Daily Solve Discord chat server this morning, and it seems that people have been uh, improving on their average Saturday times, just as many of them improved on their average Friday times yesterday. So perhaps not the most, uh, not the absolute most tricky Saturday puzzle we'll, we'll encounter, which is nice um, often. So in any case, this perhaps a bit gentler edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Tom Nemchek, Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support. They're sustaining this channel, keeping this series going. For that, I am incredibly appreciative. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who has backed the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate that. And if you would like to support the channel in that manner, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field. And there you can find the bonus videos available to patrons, which includes yesterday's um, weekly uh, mini puzzle pseudo speed solve. I got one of my best, I think maybe my best time in months uh, on one of the puzzles. Uh, so that was fun. And um, the other bonus videos are of course available. Uh, also there's the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug for benefactors. Thanks again to all of the patrons. I really do appreciate it. And you can join the aforementioned Daily Solve Discord chat server where this today's puzzle was being was being discussed. Don't worry, they are properly spoiler tagged in their, I've noticed, their uh, resolute in their adherent, <laughs> adhesion to that convention. So that's good. And uh, there's a link in the description field to that. And finally, do subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's a big help. Thank you to everybody who's done so. All right, let's get on to the crossword. This is a, a collaborative construction by Rachel Fabi and Christina Iverson. Rachel Fabi, about half a dozen puzzles to her name, and Christina Iverson, I think about two dozen. So it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving, see how we get on with this one today. Perfectly acceptable humorously. I don't know. Humorously, maybe it sort of totes something. I don't, I don't know. Number one. I don't know. Elite? I don't know. Serpentine symbol of rebirth from the Greek for tail devouring. I mean, this is this has got to be Ouroboros, right? Um, am I spelling this correctly? How disappointing. Could be, <laughs> could be this uh, this construction that I know is not actually meant to be pronounced. Tisk. There's always there's someone who corrects me on that every time, but. Every time I've done the tsk tsk sound, it doesn't seem to come through on the mic. Hopefully that one did this time, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay, bon, uh, could be bon mot, uh, literally good word in French, so a, a sort of a quip, something clever that you say. Over in Österreich. So um, Österreich is uh, Austria in German, and over is Uber, Uber in German. Uh, a word that has sort of made it into the English language to some extent as well. Okay. Perfectly acceptable humorously. Oh, and just a reminder, when you see the name of a place, uh, well, two things actually, this clue does it doubly. When you see the name of a place or when you see a clue where a significant percentage of it. I mean, in this case, there are only three words. So one of the three words is written in a foreign language. So here we have both a, um, a place name and also that place name in another language. Usually that means the answer will be in the language of that place or the language being used. So in this case, we have both. We have Austria in German. Okay. Kitchen organizer. Something rack, a plate rack, maybe. Oops. Block of text duplicated and reposted online and internet slang. Okay, I actually know what this is. This is, I have to imagine, a debut entry in the New York Times crossword. I think it's copy pasta, which is a, a sort of corruption of the phrase copy paste. I don't exactly know. I don't know if there's a reason for it. I, I suspect not. I suspect it's just a sort of, it's just a kind of cute tweak on the phrase copy paste. 
Um, but that is certainly certainly a phrase I have encountered before. So there we have it. That is a block of text duplicated and reposted online in Internet Slang, indeed. So let's see. Does that help with this? Perfectly acceptable humorously. Oh, cromulent. Oh, right. Wow. Okay. This is a term, a perfectly cromulent word. This is a. Um, I think this was in coined on The Simpsons as an example of a word. I, th I think that the joke is that this sort of feels like a very um, plausible English language word. In other words, a perfectly acceptable one, a cromulent one, but it is was not in fact one, although again, has been to some extent, I think adopted into the language. Uh, that's interesting. I'd be curious if this one has been used before. I think it actually might have been. I think I maybe remember seeing cromulent in the crossword once before. I wonder I wonder how many dictionaries it's in at this point. Principle underlying just government. Rule of law is certainly a, a foundation of um, much governance. Citrusy ingredient in some wood polishes. Orange zest, probably? No, orange oil. There we go. Uh, jump in a way. Pogo is in a pogo stick. You jump around on it. Cry after stubbing a toe, maybe. Owie? I'm just wondering. Or ouch? But ouch is just... The reason I don't I think that's less likely is that A-F-E-U doesn't look very... Some, a few. Yeah, it's got to be owie, right? It must be. Hang on blank. Official rock song of Ohio. Uh, I have no idea. Maybe this is Ow Ow, actually. That looks even better with the crosses. This looks like Taiwan. Yeah, birthplace of Ang Lee, Taiwan. There we go. Okay. Hang on, Sloopy. That's a song. Is that the official rock song of Ohio? I haven't a clue. Who, does, who decides that? Official means it must, it must have some government recognition. Interesting. I wonder what that means. It's probably one of those things where the sort of state legislature, some, some state legislator submitted a motion and it was passed, I guess that would be my guess. Okay, affixes to a scrapbook, say. Pastes on, yeah, or in maybe. Maybe I'll leave that out for now. Tang, e.g. This could refer, this could be a proper noun or not. I mean, it could be a, an adjective referring to a tang, a sort of zest, but it could also be the brand tang, which makes... Um, or the sort of powdered fruit flavored drinks, or it could be something else. A tang is a part of a um, a knife. Uh, hmm, is that relevant at all? I don't know. I'm not quite seeing any of this. Oh, dynasty, the Tang Dynasty. There we go. Yet another, a fourth, a fourth sense of the word tang. All right, good. All right, seasons. Uh, salts, you, see, you, you season food, you salt it. The French. So there are, uh, the, the, um, the definite article in French uh, has several identities, one of which is les, L-E-S, for the plural, plural definite article. Nonplussed. If you're nonplussed, you're at sea, you're confused. And Romano o Siciliano, those are cheeses. Or no, 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 they're not. They're not. They're just, those are just demonyms. They're people from Rome or people from Sicily. Um, are they? Or let's see. Large quantities. Tons. Many. Uh, neither of those fits, of course. Not sure. What about this one? True crime series about a physician who commits gross malpractice. I don't know. It could be doctor something, a physician. Let's see if that helps with this. Rubber, an eraser of a pencil, sure. Former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. I do recognize that name. Classic board game invented by an Oscar-winning French filmmaker. That is interesting. I didn't know this. It must be Risk. I'm going to have to look that up. That's incredibly interesting. Ready to fly as an arrow. Knocked. The arrow is, is knocked and ready to fly. Quality of some coincidences. Eerie? Eerie? Um, quality, some coincidences are eerily, I don't know, I can't quite see where that's going. Dr. Death? I don't actually know what this is, but I'm just guessing based on the 
clue here. A physician who commits gross malpractice from Dr. Dilley. I mean, I might have heard of that. I'm not sure. Large quantities. It looks like it could be right, but I'm going to want to confirm it, of course. They hold solutions. Vials in a chemistry lab, for instance. Showrooms. Showrooms. I don't know, TV studios or something? Yogurt dip often served with pita. Um... Yogurt dip. It's not tzatziki. What is it? Um, I'm not seeing it. That's annoying. Let's see. Number one, it's calibrated in a way. Tuned, maybe? Kicks in. Adds. You kick in an opinion. You add it. Old Ford Motors offering informally. Informally. So it needs to be abbreviated. So maybe, oops, T-Bird? A Thunderbird? Which, which was a, a uh, defunct Ford model. Toast starter. Here's to you. Here's from here's to you in a, in a, if you're toasting to somebody's health, something like that. Hybrid with a Latin name. Um, hybrid animal, I assume this is. I'm not sure immediately, though. Showrooms. What is that one? This does look like it's going to be eerie something, doesn't it? And large quantities. Rafts. Maybe this isn't Dr. Death. I don't know. R uh, Reams. Reams is our, our large quantities. Oops. Nickname that drops sun. That drops sun. Allison? Yeah, you could spell Allison A L I. You could also spell it with two L's, which I think is what I it's what's in my head more commonly, but this I think this still works. Ali could be a nickname for Allison. Focal length. Attention span? Yeah, that's clever. So you look at focal length and you think it's referring to, the, say, the, lens, the camera lens or something like that. But uh, it's referring to the sort of length of time on which you can focus on something. Number one. Looks like aloha, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that one. Yogurt dip is... Oh, labna. So this isn't... Oops. This isn't tuned, is it? What is this? Number one, Aloha? What? Calibrated in a way. Tamed? Showrooms are venues. You could see a show at a venue. Oh, eeriness. Oh, the, the quality is eeriness. So the quality means sort of, we want the noun form. Eeriness of the coincidence. Okay. There we go. That was the quality that it had. I should have, should have read the clue more carefully and thought about that. Anyway. Hybrid with a Latin name. Oh, Prius. Maybe it's a hybrid vehicle? Oh, and of course, this is Alpha. Sorry, I don't know why I didn't see that. You must have been wondering what I was thinking. <laughs> Calibrated in a way, tear it. So calibrate a uh, scale. You tear it to sort of zero out the weight to take into account any weight that's presently on it. International Cricket Powerhouse abbreviation. India, maybe? Or Pakistan? Command and Control. Uh, not this again. I'm so over it. I'm so lost. It doesn't really work. Blank state, overprotective government. Nanny state is a phrase used to just used in that way. Command and control. I'm interested by the capitalization of control here. Are they oh, they're computer keys, right? Of course. Um, okay, so maybe this is Pakistan International Cricket Powerhouse. And then equestrian princess in the 1976 Olympics must have been uh, Princess Anne, the Princess Royal of the United Kingdom. Uh, fair hits. Fair hits. Oh, not this again. I'm so done. There we go. That's what it is. Fair hits are... Not sure. NBC Current Affairs program beginning in 1992. Ooh, not sure about that either. They're not easy on the eyes. They're not easy on the eyes. Sores? Eyesores? This looks a little bit strange, though. Don't think that's right. It helps keep you on your toes. No preference. I'm easy, you could say. No preference. Scarfing down. Probably ends with an ING. None of it is good in an aphorism. 
No news is good news, as they say in an aphorism. There we go. Castilian cat. Not sure how found. Animal studied for its regenerative abilities. And the newt is that is that is true of the newt. Company's last car, sorry, company's name sounds like its last two letters. S O. Right. Uh which uh, sort of it's I don't know, kind of a self <laughs> self-duplicating concept because the that's in turn taken from those actual two letters SO for standard oil. So they they're phoneticized as ESSO, and then once again we've got the SO back in there. Okay, Castilian cat. Oh got to oh I see, right. I was trying to think of a a particular breed of cat and coming up blank. Instead, we're simply, this is, it's sort of similar to that Osterisk thing. We're, we're looking for um, the word for cat in Spanish. There we go. Isn't totally in the dark. Has an idea? Yeah, there we go. Fair hits are pony rides? What? That looks like it's the answer. This must be a this must be a phrase I don't quote. Oh, fair pony ride. Oh, is a hit at the fair? It's a popular attraction at a sort of county fair or something like that. I don't know. If it's not that, I'm not sure what it is, but it, may, it might be. They're not easy on the eyes. Oh, styes. Right. Okay. So that is sort of a sore. Not in the sense of an eyesore, something that looks that you find unattractive in the landscape, but rather a literal sore on your eye, a sty or on your eyelid, inside of your eyelid, maybe. NBC Current Affairs Program, right. Oh, Dateline, Dateline, right. Certainly, I do recognize that. Scarfing down, inhaling. You could be inhaling your food, scarfing it down. Stage, uh, I'm not sure. My point is, my point is, hmm, don't know. Blank enough for you? Hot enough for you, I guess you could ask. Heavy read could be a tome, a very large book, a large volume. So stage is something. And, oh, Italiano, I see. Okay, yeah, so it is someone from Rome or Sicily, someone who is Italian, an Italiano. There we go, okay. Uh, I was looking for something more specific for some reason, which was a mistake. And once again, once again, our third instance in this puzzle, at least, of a clue that in this case is entirely written in another language, so the answer must also be uh, in that language. Heavy loaded. The onus is on you. The load is on you. The responsibility or the burden. So my point is, oh, I see. You could say, in sum, here's what I've been saying. Stage is a phase. I see. We've reached this the, the, the final phase of solving this crossword, I think. Final stage. It helps keep you on your toes is a ballet slipper. There we go. And alternatives to budgets. Oh, so budget being capitalized here. It's referring to a proper noun. In this case, the name of a, a company, which is a rental car agency budget, and one of their competitors is called Alamo. So I suppose alternative to budgets, I suppose by budgets in plural, they mean maybe branches of budgets or budget cars. Anyway, Alamos would be the competitors. Affixes to a scrapbook say, okay, right, I had that already. I still don't know if it's paste in or on. Same here. Uh, something me, doesn't, that actually doesn't work. A baby one is called a red dog. A baby, I don't know. Uh, L'Elysir de Blanc, Donizetti Opera. The Elixir of Love, the Désir d'Amour. Uh, and there we go, yet another clue in a different language. That's the fourth so far, at least, unless I'm missing some. Minimal, the minimal option could be the least. Same here, so am I. Okay, I don't know why that didn't come to mind. And pastes in, of course, was the answer there. So, a ba oh, baby bison is called a red dog? I didn't know that. Never seen character on TV's Mork and Mindy. Owzen? I don't know. I mean, I might have seen one or two episodes of this on reruns when I was young. I don't know. I haven't a clue about this. I hope it's, I hope this is bison. May, oh no, that's clearly not. Maybe this isn't a Oh, amore. Sorry, sorry. I need the uh, the Italian spelling. Whoops, that was my my mistake. Makes Orson. It, it must be. I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm just gonna. It's a name. I'll just have to go with it. And then this is going to be Bison makes his nets. Isn't you make a certain amount of money? That's how much you net. And there we go. 
that, oh, look at that. I have an even 1600 day streak. I so rarely remember to look at that for notable days, but there we go. 1600. I'll say that's notable. And, uh, that was the Saturday crossword. Very good. I really enjoyed that one. I think I made some of these more difficult for myself than I needed to, but I definitely see what people mean when they say this one was maybe a bit more approachable than others and had this, uh, a very surprising cross here with cromulent and copy positive. These are both extremely, you know, on a historical basis, recently coined words or, or, yeah, I suppose they are both words. I was going to say phrases, but copy pasta, I think it's, I think it's generally written as a single word. Um, so that's very, that's very surprising to me that they would, <laughs> they would kick off the puzzle and cross one another in that way. I wonder how, I wonder how people fared with those in general. I suspect, uh, I suspect those were hits on the Daily Solve Discord server, but you'll have to find out. Uh, Ouroboros is good. Okay, that was spelled correctly, I suppose. <laughs> that's good. And uh, yeah, Dr. Death, I'll have to look, look that up. What was the other one I really wanted to look up? It was risk. That is absolutely fascinating. Where was that? A French, what was it? An Oscar winning director or something like that? Yeah, here it is. Classic board game invented, invented by an Oscar winning French filmmaker. Okay, it doesn't say director, but prob probably a director, I'm guessing, but no, not necessarily. In any case, very interesting. Some some interesting some interesting sort of facts and interesting words in today's crossword. It was a, it was, and I suppose if you're going to do that, it makes sense for the overall challenge level to maybe be a bit a bit softer. It would be tough to combine things. I think like cromulent and copy pasta with an incredibly brutally difficult puzzle surrounding them. Uh, but anyway, there we go. That was the Saturday puzzle, and now I will just look at a few clues from yesterday's puzzle based on, based on, it looks like two comments that I have. So Nix Hicks points out regarding uh, masks at spas, that spas offer things like mud masks, clay masks, algae masks, etc. There you go. Yes. I sort of in general was aware of masks at spas, but I couldn't bring any of these examples to mind. So thank you for that. And oh no, I have, sorry. Oh no, no, no. I don't have two uh, to read today. I have four, I think. Right. Okay. So in addition to that, Jeremy T. Moody points out regarding the clue for C8H18, the chemical compound, alkanes are named for the number of carbon atoms. The first four are methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Then the prefix prefixes come from Greek, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, etc. So eight equals oct. That's very good to know. I didn't know that. Of course, I'll have to know that I'm in that category to begin with for that to be helpful to me, but it is still, it's still worth knowing if I can, if I can remember it. But yes, so this is exactly what I mean. But then don't get confused with alkenes and alkynes. They follow the same pattern, but alkenes have twice as many hydrogen atoms as carbon atoms. Alkenes have more than double Alk alkynes have fewer than double. Right. Okay. See, that's the point at which I'm going to, <laughs> that's the point at which I'm going to completely, there, there's no point in even trying to remember. What I will try and remember is the bit at the beginning, the number of carbon atoms uh, follows the pattern of, let's see, methane, ethane, pro, well, methane, ethane, propane, butane, that's going to be tough to remember. The ones higher than four are easier. Pentane, hexane, heptane, octane. Okay, so the, the pent, hex, hept, and oct are the, the bits I assume would be common to all of these, these categories. Anyway, let's move on. Dave N says, you mentioned mirepoix in relation to a pasta sauce ingredient. In Italian, that mix of onion, carrot, and celery is called soffritto. Indeed, indeed it is. And I should have called it by its Italian name. I completely blanked on it at the time, which is why I fell back on the French term mirepoix. But yes, you're absolutely right. That is called soffritto in Italian. And I should have remembered it. The F and Crow says, for 60 across, there's another meaning to that other than close. This was the clue that I think was deprive of threads. And the answer was strip. And I explained that as being stripping someone's uh, clothing, their, their threads. But the F and Crow says, there's another meaning in that you could have a threaded screw that you damage by stripping the threads. I suspect the pun indicator is around that double meaning since strip is a pretty straightforward answer to that clue in either context otherwise. I think that's a good point. Didn't even occur to me. Yes, you could strip someone of clothing and you could strip a screw of its threads. In either case, you're stripping of threads. Very good. And those are the comments from yesterday's puzzle that I saw. And that means that's that for today's video. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with the Sunday puzzle. Um, 
I was going to say it should be easier than this one, but it probably will be in the same general ball ballpark as today's difficulty, perhaps, uh, but much larger with a theme. So uh, it does generally take longer for that reason. And thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I will be back tomorrow for the Sunday to join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.